Hello everyone, um, I'm just going to give you a few minutes to log in um, and then we'll start. the noisiest clock in the world so I do apologize if you can hear that throughout the whole of this webinar. I'll play every piece at that speed. Okay, that seems to be everyone that's filtering through the time being. Um, so welcome everyone to today's webinar on the 2021-2023 piano syllabus. My name is Natalie Christopher and I am um, work for Trinity in the sex support team, supporting teachers such as yourselves to um, uh, prepare your students for their exams and managing the certificate for music educators um, qualification. Um, so uh, if you would like to say hello to us on the chat, that would be absolutely great. Um, the focus of today's webinar is on the piano syllabus. As I'm sure um, you're already aware, we are not going to be offering face-to-face -face examinations this term due to the ongoing uncertainty surrounding coronavirus. Um, as an alternative, Trinity will be offering a new suite of digital grading diplomas, which we will touch on briefly during this session where relevant. However, this is not gonna be something that we go into great detail about today. Instead, we have two uh, webinars lined up for later on this month. The first is going to be um, a general overview for both classical and jazz and rock and pop, um, which is scheduled for the 24th of November. We will also be presenting a piano focused session in partnership with the Curious Piano Teachers on the 26th of November. And in this session, we're gonna be elaborating a little bit more on the technical work requirements for um, digital assessments for piano, positioning cameras, that kind of thing. Um, our digital pages are all live on the website now. Um, so we are gonna ask you to refrain from any posing any burning questions about digital grades and diplomas today. But if you do want to um, um, send us an email, please do do that. Um, and also um, the links are gonna be posted shortly to the um, uh, chat if you want to sign up for either of those webinars. Um, the chat function you're already familiar with, um, I've already outlined, and I've got a couple of colleagues um, with me today that are going to be um, uh, looking at the chat and answering any questions. If you've got any real questions that you want, um, want us to pose, uh, want to pose, and you want us to answer during the session or to, uh, at the end of this session, more likely, um, please do use the Q and A function that's at the bottom of your screen. Um, we'll either address those at the end of the session, or one of my colleagues that are working on the chat, they will answer that for you. If there's anything that we can't answer, um, then we will follow up with you afterwards. We'll, we'll get an answer for you. Um, so as I said, we're going to do our presentation and then uh, we'll do a Q&A session at the end. This session is being recorded. So at the end of the session, uh, you'll be sent um, some follow-up documents with links to all the resources that we've put in the chat today. Um, and if you do have to shoot off to go teach, do teaching, that's absolutely fine. You'll be able to catch up with the session afterwards. So... Um, we don't, I'm joined today by Linda Nottingham, who was a consultant on the new piano syllabus. Uh, Linda, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your involvement in music, please? Hello, Natalie, and hello, everybody. Uh, well, for as long as I can remember, uh, I've always loved to sing, but I only tinkered on the piano, which was at my grandmother's house, until I was about eight, when I insisted on starting lessons. Um, so it was something that I only did really at home or with my teacher. And it wasn't until I was at university, really, that I consider I became um, serious about playing. I had two really marvellous teachers at university, 
and um, fortunately I was able to include performance as part of my music degree. I think it was the first university that was doing that at the time in the 70s. Uh, after that I was lucky enough to uh, be awarded a scholarship through the British Council to study with Jan Paninka at the Ad Academy of Musical Arts in Prague, so I was there for two years. And that really was when I decided that I would like to make a career in music. Um, I love working with singers and I find the uh, combination of language and uh, music something that's just terribly interesting and intriguing and inspiring. And chamber music is also something which I find very rewarding because I do love to share music, although of course I love playing solo works, but there we are. So once I returned to London, uh, I began teaching and I must enjoy it because 40 years on, here I am still doing it and still learning from it and about it. Um, the pupil-teacher relationship is something to be nurtured and uh, it's sometimes challenging but always enjoyable and interesting just to work out exactly how you can adapt your teaching to each individual pupil's needs. And can you tell us um, more about your involvement with Trinity and what drew you to working with us? Hmm. Uh, well, as a teacher, both privately and in schools, I used various examining boards. Um, but I think it was when I did some accompanying of Trinity diploma exams uh, that I realised the candidates were being made to feel, feel really welcome. And there was always um, a friendly but calm atmosphere in the room. And uh, I've accompanied many grade exams as well, and I found that there too. Uh, when my son left for university, um, I had more time to myself to do different things and to travel, of course, which is necessary if you're an examiner. So I applied to Trinity, was fortunate enough to be successful, and I've been examining for eight years. It's uh, highly enjoyable. And what was your involvement with the new piano syllabus? All right. Um, well, initially, I was involved with meeting teachers and specialists and listening to their opinions. Uh, many pieces, of course, are suggested um, for a new syllabus. And there's always a very careful process of weighing up whether a work is actually appropriate for an exam or not. And then there are several stages of a sort of filtering system. <laughs> and uh, then I was involved in the decision making, which resulted in our new syllabus. So, you know, it's good fun. Uh, the new exercises are commissioned, of course, and that was in the, there was another detailed pro process to uh, check these two and choose them. Thank you. Um, before we go into any detail about the new syllabus, I do just want to flag some important information to you all. Um, the syllabus we're talking about today is valid from the 1st of January 2021 to 31st of December 2023. So if you are planning on entering candidates for digital exam this autumn, they will be performing from the current, they will need to be performing from the 2018 2020 syllabus. The overlap period for the current syllabus is one year, so it can be used until the 31st of December 2021. This means that for the duration of 2021, candidates can perform from either the 2018-2020 syllabus or the 2021-2023 syllabus, but not a combination of the two. The syllabus being used should be indicated on either the appointment slip or the entry submission form during this period. One thing also to note is that a select number of pieces from the 2018 syllabus have been included on the 2021 repertoire lists. As before, candidates will need to stipulate which syllabus they are performing from and once the overlap period is over, must perform the technical work from the 2021-2023 syllabus. So that's a lot of information and a lot of dates that they've just bombarded you with. Um, so all of that information is available um, on the website and um, there'll be a link posted in the chat um, shortly um, where you can access that. So Linda, this leads us on quite nicely to talking about the repertoire and the new syllabus. Um, I understand that this syllabus contains our largest repertoire list um, for piano to date. Yeah, that's right. Um, Trinity conducted some research to find out from our customers 
and what they would like to see the piano, how they would like to see the piano syllabus evolve. And one of the key responses that came from them was a desire to see um, a greater quantity of pieces and range of repertoire. So we have listened very carefully. And so the 2021 syllabus consists of 35 pieces per grade from a range of international composers, um, as well as retaining some old favourites from the previous syllabus. And we also got some aspiring composers involved too, didn't we? Yes, we did, which was very exciting. Um, we held a young composers competition earlier in the year, and there's a piece included at every grade um, from a winner in that competition. And we really want to encourage young people to write their own music. And I'm going to play um, the young composers competition winner um, is Mintra Duntawek. And I'm going to play the piece from that com young composer it, from the initial, uh, at the initial grade. And it's called Muay Thai, which means the boxing star, Thai boxing, we assume. Um, and if anyone wonders, um, I was sharing my screen there so that you could see the score, um, which is available in our sample booklet. And um, you'll see that that piece is from the initial grade repertoire list and um, that's included in that. Uh, Linda, it's a great piece, isn't it? Yeah, and it's so encouraging uh, to the, think that one of our young composers wrote it and it's now in the syllabus. So we do want to encourage more of it, which is why we actually have an option for candidates to play their own composition in their exam. And we have some guidance notes on the support section of our website too to help students ensure that their composition is of the right level for the grade they're entering for, um, which has just been shared in the chat. Um, so what else do you think is particularly exciting or special about the syllabus this time around? Well, there's an even broader choice of pieces and styles, and we've included works by marvellous composers from all over the world who have been neglected thus far and we feel that our syllabus reflects a really broad spectrum of music from around the world and throughout cultures. Um, we have alternative pieces too at those in the Trinity books at every grade so there really is something for everyone. All the pieces are listed alphabetically in the syllabus and where you can find each piece is clearly stated. Uh, and let, let's not forget that up to grade three, a Frankie duet may be included. Uh, social distancing <laughs> guidelines, guidelines permitting, of course. Of course, yes. <laughs> so we have um, 315 pieces in total. I'm afraid there's not enough time to play them all, obviously, but I'd like to show you some of my favorites. Uh, pieces that seemed especially appealing to me um, or would, in my opinion, make a great addition to a varied program. So I'm going to refer to some pieces and I'll play snippets from some of them. So I'll carry on uh, at initial and I'd just like to point out that there is another piece by the composer Ryan Nagler. I think the piece I've probably heard most over the last, through the last syllabus was the Allegro by Ryan Nagler, which many, many candidates chose at initial. So we do have another one, it's called Allegretto. No articulation written in the music, so that's great in the lesson to experiment with the pupil and they can decide on their own performance of it. Next, I'd like to refer to a piece called by Laos Pa. It's called The Giant. And what can be more appealing, appealing, particularly for a small child, to feel as if you're much bigger and it requires quite a lot of strength to play. Although much of it uh, begins with hands an octave apart uh, and five finger position, 
there is a little shift, but the patterns are good. And so on. No time for the whole piece, unfortunately. And then one of our lead senior examiners, Peter Wilde, has written Into the Distance, which is a very thoughtful piece and it would suit some children very much to uh, try, try and depict something. What is it in the distance? What's going into the distance? ending of that piece. Um, the duet at this uh, grade that's in the book is called Please Stay Chihuahua and there are words to it. Chihuahua, Chihuahua, you've travelled for days um, and we thought this would be really sweet because you could sing along whilst practising it um, and it's got a real lilt to it and it's a good lesson in playing in three time with an upbeat into each phrase. A lot of music is like that. And so I'm going to go on to grade one now and there's a real favourite here of mine and I'm sure of many teachers and it's King William's March by Jeremiah Clark. It's trumpets isn't it? It's a fanfare, it's a welcome, it's a big occasion. phrases. Why not put an ornament? It's not written. You're not penalised if you don't. You're not penalised if you do. And then a piece by an American composer called Melody Bobber. You might have come across some of her duets or even her pieces for six hands. And this is called Stealth Mode. So it's one of those mysterious, exciting pieces and you get to put left hand over right. by Mark Tanner, a very colourful piece which will be fun to practice. It's called The Croc That Swallowed a Clock and um, there's an image of the huge beast but also this thing going tick tick bit like Natalie's clock uh, inside him. And what do we get to do at the end? A cluster chord. Great fun. And then I'd like to go on to the winner of the Young Composers competition at grade one. And this is Matthew Pitarello, who I believe was eight or nine when he wrote this and it's called Viking Village. And so on, later on. And so on, and an echo at the end. So I think lots of people might be inspired by that piece um, to try writing something themselves. On to grade two now, keeping my eye on the clock. So 
the first piece I'd just like to mention is the Kanzanet by Christian Gottlob Nefer, who actually taught Beethoven. I don't know for how many years, I must look that up. And so isn't, wouldn't that be lovely playing a piece that Beethoven's teacher wrote? And it is actually beautifully written for the piano. classical foundation things there and uh, left hand and right hand combining shaping of phrases important there not just playing the notes on the page and then I have to communicate our uh, this duet that's in the book called Island in the Sun by Hans Günther Hoyman because any fan of Puff the Magic Dragon will just have to play this piece Listen to the first phrase. I'll try and play four hands. <laughs> We have a piece by uh, Mark Tanner and it's called Orpheus in His Underpants. Now you can just imagine a young boy um, racing around getting dressed and thinking about this marvellous piano piece and of course it's a reference to Orpheus in the Underworld, the operetta by Offenbach, which contains the famous music the Can Can. Um, the thing is we don't quite know that it is the Can Can to start with if you listen to the beginning. And later on we get, so we think, aha, I think I know what this music is, and then we get, so it's very clever, it's fragmented the themes of the can can and put them together. Um, great fun to practice, lots of articulative detail, and I think a lot of people find that appealing. And then we have a really cool light rock feel piece by the saxophonist Chris Gumbly. And this is called Nuff Said. So I better not say anything else about it and just play a bit of it. learn the rhythms really well. Then the winner of the Young Composers competition at this grade, um, Waris Sukhanda Patti Park from Thailand, and it's called Floating Balloons, Upward Scales. They float away, uh, the balloons float away at the end. I'll play the first and last phrases. It's very pretty. Now we're moving on to grade three. There's a very beautiful piece by Couperin called Les Coucou Benevol. So it's nothing to do with couscous, although it looks a little bit like that. Um, it's a very delicate piece and it needs, um, I think, good understanding of the style. So listening to some French Baroque music and the elegance of it would be good. And now, just to mention the duet in the book called Rondino by Diaberli. Now, this is grade three. It is five fingers, five notes piece, hands together, an octave apart quite a lot of the time. However, it is fast 
and you ha it has to be crisp and articulate and it's not as easy as it might look on the page. And I'm just mentioning it because um, have, it, seeing something like that reminds me of when I was young and hadn't been playing the piano for that long and played duets with the old gentleman, Mr. Robson, who was my first teacher. And I had such wonderful memories of that. It's like a feeling inside of me. And when I see something like this or play it with the pupil, um, you know, it's, it's a really good feeling. It's part of the meaning of the piano for me. Uh, now we're going to just have a little bit of a piece by Christine Donkin, and it's called An Autumn Leaf. in the wind and then it settles again at the end. I think it's a very descriptive piece, very expressive piece, a lovely one for practicing legato and a lovely one for understanding about six eight time. And then we have something that's in the sample booklet by Sandra Leach who is from New Zealand and it's called Undercover Agent so even the title is intriguing and um, it says moderately sneaky. Um, there are repeated patterns here which recover much of the keyboard. Here's the opening of it. Now we're moving on to the winner of the competition at this grid, and it's the Night of the Sleepy Panda. It just make, makes you feel like curling up and going to sleep by Edric Tan. So um, this is all on the black note, so of course it's a pentatonic piece. <laughs> while learning how to change the pedal correctly. And now one of our alternative pieces. So this is by Hale Smith, an American composer who was born in 1925. And it's from a book uh, called, a selection called Faces of Jazz. And it's called My Scarf is Yellow. And it starts off a bit like um, a conundrum we can't really tell how many beats there are in the bar at the beginning of this. And then the middle section is very jazzy. to grade four. There's a beautiful piece by Cimarosa, sonata in A minor, singing line, it's in modo siciliano, and there are sort of different phrase lengths as well, they're not predictable. I'll just play the first phrase. <laughs> very lyrical. I'll definitely be having people playing that. And then uh, a very exciting piece called Lights in the Rear View by Ben Crossland, whose music we have used quite a bit in the past. Um, so this is a bit like a car chase or spy movie. when la 
time stops being a metronome. When those crutches stop, then that's the real challenge. Um, I'm aware that I have to keep to time. So I will show you a little bit of an alternative piece called Quella Number no. 1, which is by a South African composer called Isaac Ru. And uh, it too has a jazzy uh, intermission, let's say, in the middle. I'll just play a little bit of this piece. by Schubert called Vase Sentimental and um, I did read once that Schubert used to um, sort of on a Saturday evening have friends round and just improvise waltzes the whole evening thinking he might write them down later as duets. Um, but this one is particularly um, ex uh, full of expression, it is Vase Sentimental and it's also very good for talking about chromatic alter alteration in changing key. I won't get that far, but the waltz is in an A, ma a major, and the middle stick section starts in C sharp major. Roman legionnaires, an unstoppable force. It says much tempo with sarcasm. So um, it's a bit like, look what I can do. We need to act a part here. So very good for staccato chords and to get a people who might be quite shy to acting in a certain manner. We have to be like actors when we play to characterise the music. And then there's a piece by Ross Petto called Typhoon. And then we have Walk in the Park by Gillon Fox. And this is the winner of the Young Composers competition at this grade. It just makes me think of um, a film about New York in the 60s, and this is Central Park, A Walk in the Park. And what else have we got? We've got a Chinese piece called Friendship. And this is by Tong Shang, and it's from a set of pieces called uh, Folk Songs from Inner Mongolia. the Young Composers competition winner, just a little snippet, and this is called, sorry I've got the wrong book, it's not called, sorry I've got the wrong book, 
It's called Epilogue. And it's by a Chinese-Australian composer called Huang Su. And this is sort of one to relax to. Pines, which is by uh, a composer called Burley, um, an American composer um, who was studying singing at the National Conservatory of Music when the composer Antonin Dvorak was the director. And Dvorak heard this man sing, who was a really good baritone, quite renowned in his time, and asked him to sing him spirituals and folk songs. And it's thought that this composer was an influence on Dvorak because he wrote the American String Quartet, Symphony from the New World, and so on. This is a beautiful piece which develops later into something more technically challenging, but here's the opening. We won't uh, get snippets off today, but never mind. Um, I'll show you from grade seven a little bit of the composition winner. And this is Charlotte Botterill, who wrote a piece for us called Soho. Soho. And there's a, there's, a, there's a groove that keeps coming back. It's in various jazz styles, and the groove crops up in various guises. So a short introduction, and I'll play the groove. Marianne Martinez. So uh, she was a virtuoso singer in the time of Haydn and Mozart. And you can hear this, I think, in this, in this movement, because um, she was a coloratura soprano and actually sang, I think, in a Mozart opera at the time. Um, so somehow you can hear that in this music. It's fantastic movement and it shows such a love of and ability to write for the keyboard. There's a piece by Alan Bullard, Prelude Number Eight in G Major, which is in Group A, and so it's a sort of more technical group. And there are huge contrasts. Listen to this. to PP, Leggero and Staccato, Finger Staccato, and it's very exciting to play. I feel I have to go on now to grade eight, otherwise I'll run out of time. And so I would like to show you a piece by Carl Czerny. So we know Czerny for his writing of studies, but um, he wrote a collection of 24 pieces, I think it is, called Album Elegant des Dames Pianistes, and each one has a woman's name, and therefore a different character. This is Feodora. So 
Uh, the middle section, which requires legato control of up to four voices, is in the major. So she's proud and independent, but with a melting sort of middle bit. <laughs> and also, I would just like to show maybe another couple of minutes. Also, like to show you um, a piece from the alternative list. And this is by Lily Boulanger. She had a much more famous com composer sister called Nadia Boulanger, but Lily unfortunately died when she was 25. And she wrote this in, um, I think, just be, uh, oh, in 1914. She died in 1918. And she wrote it while she was on her year's study abroad at the Villa Medici in Rome, having run, won the coveted composition prize, the Prix de Rome, which Debussy had won before her. And this is called D'un vieux jardin, um, about an old garden. <laughs> No, don't apologise. Thank you so much for that whistle stop tour, Linda. I think that's quite an achievement to get through so many pieces in such a short amount of time. So thank you ever so much. Um, Pleasure. <laughs> and so when it comes to purchasing the music, I understand candidates have two options, really. Uh, yes, we have the usual style books, which contain 12 exam pieces, um, performance notes for those 12 pieces, and the new technical work exercises that Natalie's shown you now. Alternatively, we have the extended edition, and these books contain the same 12 pieces, but also access to the nine additional pieces. That's as a download, and the download is just seeing how to do it at the back of each book. You can see it. Very easy to do. Um, it includes the performance notes for all 21 pieces, downloadable audio for all of those as well, and the new technical work exercises, plus the scales and arpeggios. Great, and um, there's going to be a link to the page that I've just um, shared with you um, on the chat just ever so shortly. If it's not, no, it's not there yet, but it will be ever so shortly. Um, and of course, you can always buy our books on the, through the Trinity shop. Um, we briefly touched on technical work back then. Can you talk us through any changes that might have been made to technical work for the syllabus, please, Linda? Okay, of course. Um, well, our skills and arpeggios haven't really changed very much. We still have the requirements going hand in hand with development through the grades. Uh, for instance, at grade one, scales and arpeggios are one sharp and one flat key signature, and that follows through to grade five. Um, challenges such as playing with varied dynamics and articulation and so on are added gradually. So all of this, um, we feel, gives a really good framework for teaching. However, we have got a whole new set of exercises, and these provide a teaching tool to aid technical development, linked to characterization, they all have titles, for instance, um, and observance of markings of dynamic and articulation all wrapped up in a small package. So as usual, there's a choice of two in each of the three areas, and the areas are tone balance and voicing, coordination, and finger and wrist strength and flexibility. There are actually some videos on a selection of these in the piano resources section of the website. Great, now, um... As anticipated, this question has already come up on the q and I've spotted it. Um, those eager to enter students um, for digital exams this session may have already spotted that the technical work is now required, unlike it was, unlike during the summer. Um, will students taking this option need to perform all of the scales and arpeggios plus all three exercises? Definitely not. Um, the technical work requirements um, for each syllabus have been broken down into bundles and the candidate chooses which one to include on their video submission. 
So for piano, candidates will be required to um, choose between two sets of scales and arpeggios to perform, either A, set A, or set B. So it's a bit like choosing between two set menus when you order a takeaway. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then the exercises are very similar to, to when you prepare for a face-to-face -face exam. The candidates are required to perform two from two different groups. But instead of the candidate choosing one and then the examiner choosing one, the candidate will just choose both. But of course, all of the information can be found on our website. Yes, and um, I can see that my colleagues have put that in, that link in the chat right now. Um, again, remember that for the autumn session, so right up until the 31st of December um, 2020, if you're submitting, um, if candidates are submitting videos before that date, they must choose their technical work from the 2018-2020 syllabus. So as a piano teacher yourself and someone who's worked on the new piano syllabus, Linda, what top tips do you have for our teachers today? Well, um, if you have time, make, if you can make time in lessons, do try out some improvisation. Uh, I was never encouraged to do this as a child, and it's quite a good sight reader. Um, I didn't really experiment, and to, you know, I did, off my own bat, I didn't go and do it either, and it's such a shame. Um, it should always be fun, and there are some very good tips actually from Lucinda Mackworth Young who uses some lower grade Trinity uh, pieces from the 2018 syllabus to demonstrate how to encourage improvisation. Well worth a look. And the Trinity's, uh, the videos, sorry, are on Trinity's YouTube site and are easy to find. So who knows, perhaps your pupils might even want to try this option in the future. I think it's good to do it before thinking, I will do this as an, in an exam as an option for one of my supporting tests. Just do it anyway. Um, also, I think it, to combine work on scales and arpeggios um, with those occurring in pieces that are being learned to make them more relevant, I think we can then show how these building blocks can lead to um, easier execution of passage work, uh, particularly in classical and baroque uh, works. Um, also, plan profitable fingering very early and write it in if necessary. Try to include your pupil in the working out of the fingering. Um, I think this helps them understand what's pianistic and what isn't pianistic. It's very difficult to change things later if awkward things have been practiced, you know, repeated in practice. Another thing would be, I think, to view rhythmic precision as a really good foundation for the learning of a piece before you hang the notes on those rhythms. Um, if things aren't going very well, uh, then tell a silly joke. That's always good. Um, ah, Natalie, what's the wettest part of the piano? Wettest part? Mm, the damper pedal. Ah. So another one, sorry about that, uh, to <laughs> enable pupils to listen to each other and discuss their work. Um, they can be very supportive of each other um, and they could, this, if, if, you, if it's not possible to have a concert, which it's not at the moment, then it could be within their bubble at school or via secure online platforms. Um, another thing which we must mention is it would be good to point them in the direction of Trinity hashtag, is that right, hashtag play it forward on our website. Yeah. They can download for free the pieces, uh, three pieces written by our successful young composers. So that's at grades initial, the one I played, and four and seven. Uh, they may consider recording their performance of one of these and sharing it on social media. So there's a lovely video on the website which explains everything, and you'll hear the piece Remembrance, which is the sample in the sample booklet, a grade four by Maria Mifsud, and that's played by our candidates from all around the world. It's quite affecting, actually, that video. Um, and music is, after all, an international language. Thank you, Linda. That's great. Um, and thank you. And of course, there are um, there's always Trinity support pages. Um, if there's anything particularly that you uh, in, uh, extra guidance that you're looking for. 
So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, and I can see that there are a number of questions that have been um, popping up into the um, Q&A section. So thank you ever so much for those. Um, and thank you also to my colleagues who have been answering many, many questions by the looks of it um, over the course of the last um, 50 minutes. So Linda, are you okay if we um, try and answer some of these? Yes, I'll do what I can. <laughs> okay, so first question from Karen. Hello, Karen. Um, why do scales jump from one octave hand separately to two octave hands together from grade one to grade two? Yes, well, this was something that we've been looking at, and who knows, it might change in the future. Um, that's how it is at the moment. Um, we're sorry if it doesn't seem to be ironed out enough for you. Sorry. Okay. Um, um, for a question from Emma. If pupils buy the extended book, but then pick a piece from the ebook which has to be downloaded, can they bring a photocopy of this piece into the face to face exam? Well, what will happen is if you uh, download the ebook and then you print it off, it has your name on the bottom of it saying this has been printed Clever. off. So it just shows on every page you print off that it's legal. Brilliant. I'm Great. Amazed I remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing you did. Great. Um, so, uh, Question from Ian, do you have any tips or advice for teaching lessons over Zoom to make a pleasurable and profitable experience for pupils and teachers? Well, what I make sure uh, I do is it was like today, hopefully you could see my hands, perhaps you could see everything I did in the base. Um, but I, it is possible, I think, very easily to demonstrate you're not at the same piano, but they're seeing you at your piano. And somehow it's like having two keyboards if you're lucky enough to have two two pianos that's very good for teaching so try and think of it like that there are two pianos close together and they can see you you can see them obviously it's made me look at my pupils hands i look at them a lot anyway but i look at them even more now because i think watching what they're doing makes up for the lack of sound quality and I always thank them as well for their patience because there are always things that go wrong or they have to say, sorry, what did you say, Miss Nottingham? I couldn't hear you. I think it's taught us all to be quite patient as well. And I don't have such aims for them, I think, every week. I think you need to take the pressure off a little bit because just having that lesson like that um, is, is enough, I think, of pressure on Don't know if that's, that's really. That's really interesting, Linda. Thank you. Um, question from Trevor: How the fourteen mark? How are the fourteen marks for technical work allocated between scales and arpeggios and the exercises? Um, well, this is a holistic mark, actually. So it's fourteen for everything. Okay. Lorna has a question which I suspect might be candidate dependent, student dependent, but it's a, she so asks, um, which grade eight piece would the pupils find the easiest out of group A? <laughs> yes, who, who is the pupil? Who are the pupils? <laughs> um, I don't know, it, 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 really does, it really does depend on them because some people would find one with big stretches and they have small hands, that wouldn't be a choice for them. No problem. Yeah. And mine, I was, I was spreading some codes today that aren't written to be spread. Um, in a grade eight piece, in the Lily Boulanger piece, I can't put the left hand codes down, but you can learn to be sneaky. <laughs> um, e easy, I don't know. Um, what I wouldn't play is the Cascades by Scott Joplin because I'm just not very good at playing ragtime music. Peter Wilde's brilliant at it, but I'm not. <laughs> so I think everybody needs to know what their forte are what their forte is mm. and choose accordingly. I wouldn't say that there was anyone I'm flicking through at the moment that I would consider consider to be easier than any other. No. <laughs> See, we've chosen them all so well to be at the same level. That seems to be all the questions we have popping up at the moment. 
So um, we're five minutes ahead of time. So if, unless anybody's got something burning they want to ask quickly, um, I'll just take this opportunity um, to share the contact information again. If you do think of anything that you want to ask us um, when you finish the um, finish the webinar, or if uh, you know uh, watching back, so please do drop us an email. And um, my colleagues just shared it in the chat now. Um, again, you will receive documents. Or, uh, we'll send this all out to you um, later on in the week um, and get this out to you um, with the recording so that if you've had to, you know, if you were late joining us or had to go and answer the door to the postman or anything, you can catch up. Uh, just a reminder again about the two webinars at the end of the month. So the first one is on the 24th of November, and that's going to be our general overview um, of the digital grades and diplomas um, for rock and pop and for classical and jazz. And then um, there's also the Curious Piano Teachers one on the 26th of November. Um, and um, that's going to have a piano specialism to it. So you'll, um, we'll be able to give you a little bit more information about that technical work. Um, going to things like piano, um, positioning of the camera, all that kind of thing, just a little bit more detail for you. Um, again, we're going to be recording those sessions. So if you can't make it on the date and time that, um, that we're post and um, that we're going to be broadcasting, then register and um, you'll be able to access it afterwards after the date. So um, just double check that there aren't any more questions popping up. No, that seems to be everything. So um, I'll, round, I'll, um, I'll wrap things up then. So thank you ever so much to Linda and to my colleagues today um, for supporting yes. us on the chat. And uh, thank you everyone for attending. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.